Hey, Flash Class fans, Captain CA here with another YouTube vid. Um, it's tarpon season, and sometimes tarpon season, I know this seems like breaking news, is not all that easy. You get west wind, which here on the west coast is a bad thing. It makes it a lot tougher. Some of the fish leave, some of the fish stay, but, I mean, it's always a challenge for boat position and clients to see the fish. And let alone we had a tropical system this week. Well, I ended up having some of my favorite clients, Mark and Nancy Hunhausen, spend some time tarpon fishing with me this week. And let me tell you, it was a big, big challenge. Uh, in the past, you can see right here, we've had some unbelievable tarpon fishing. But this week, kind of challenging. We had two days and they were just, well, they were the wrong two days. In many instances, when I get challenged with this stuff, I'll try to find a plan B. And most of the time that's snook fishing. But in this case, we were fishing in Pasco County, one of my favorite places to fish for tarpon. And uh, well, I ended up knowing a little spot that I had discovered with another client that we could uh, probably do a little cobia fishing because the light wasn't going to matter where we were gonna fish for these cobia. And we could make our lighter weight tarpon gear turn into cobia gear quite quickly. Now we never really hooked the big cobia. Uh, I had one shot at it and I messed that one up. But uh, both Mark and Nancy ended up getting a cobia and uh, albeit they weren't the biggest cobia, it was a good plan B. So I'm gonna send you to the action and then we'll be right back here to talk about some of the tackle that you can use for both tarpon fishing uh, on the beach and you can still, I mean, with artificials, you can still catch a couple of cobia or snook. Flats Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. It's on the jerk shrimp. This one's pretty close to legal. That's a, that is a stick there. That's the tarpon rod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tarpon fishing use Cobia as plan B. Believe that first one we hooked and lost was bigger than that. He's green, dude. I try to get a little underwater footage when you bring them by. Serious spines on their back. Yeah, that one's too small. Some serious spines. But he ate that little, he ate that little jerk shrimps. I know that you pulled the jerk shrimps. Oh, we lost them that fast. Perfect. He's gonna be a little too small. Want to get a quick picture with him? It 
until I put this in his mouth and then he's going to go nuts. Right, let me get a pick real quick. So I'm going to preface this by saying this is a super lightweight setup here for beach tarpon fishing. You're going to have to drive around with the fish a little bit. But this is a Saragossa, a Shimano Saragossa, 6,000 reel. And uh, I have it stacked with 30 pounds, super slick uh, Power Pro V2. It does me a really good job. This is a Terramar, there's the numbers, the model number for it. It's a medium heavy action rod, but it's a Terramar Double X. It's one of my favorite rods. And these rods tend to be one power higher than what you would expect. So uh, the medium heavy does a good job. I have a seven foot heavy. This is a seven and a half foot rod. Uh, I have a long leader attached to my my lure here. And that leader <coughs> is about four and a half feet to five feet long. And it's 40 pounds. But I've got a short section of 60 right here that I blood knotted, if you will can see the blood knot there. A short section of bite tip tippet. And <coughs> this this little uh, jig setup here is head weighted so you can get a decent cast. All right, and that's a Z-Man setup. It's called the Snake Locks. And then one of my favorite baits is one of my own, which is the um, Jerk Shrimps. This is the Z-Man Jerk Shrimps. It does a really solid job for me on all species in shallow water. You can see this one's gotten picked up by a couple of pinfish and things like that while we've been throwing it. Um, but Cobia love it. Tarpon love this thing. Redfish love this thing. And it's a nice slim profile that you can get a long cast with heavier gear like that. And uh, and the and the fish know it's a crustacean because that little those little paddle antenna do a really good job. And it looks very real. And because it's dark, you know, when the fish are looking up, all they see is that silhouette. It kind of looks like a crab or a shrimp. So it does a fine job for me. Now, don't get me wrong. I have heavier tarpon setups inside the boat. I always keep Saragossa 8000s in there rigged up on extra heavy Terramar double X's. But I, I like to keep two or three of these lighter setups inside the boat just because whew, I got to pull that rip cord. I want to be able to go snook fishing. I want to be able to go cobia fishing. And while we're doing one of those, if a tarpon does swim by, we have the opportunity to still stick one. So that's why it's important to bring, or what I like to call loaded for bear, when you go tarpon fishing, have two or three tarpon setups, but also have two, maybe three alternatives. You never know when Kobe are going to show up. You never know when triple tail are going to show up. Uh, all you have to do is move to the beach and fish to swash for snook. And Lord only knows there's tons of sharks out there that you could hook up if you bring a little wire with you and make things real fun with the spinners and the black tips. So there's all kinds of plan B's out there for you. Okay, if you like what you're seeing here on Flats Class YouTube and you're learning stuff, especially inshore salt water stuff, give me that thumbs up and subscribe. We want to make you a better inshore angler. All right, till next time, Captain CA signing off. Hopefully this weather will get a little bit better and I'll be back out there on the beach tarpon fishing. <laughs>